Sunset on FS1. Hello, Hidalgo. The UFC Octagon continues to forge into new territories. Cleveland last week. This weekend, we head to the southern border of Texas for an old-fashioned shootout. And there is half of the main event surging. Lightweight Dustin Poirier, a product of South Florida's American top team. He is 4-0 with three knockouts since the bump up to 155. But training just 15 miles away is his opponent, the black zillion Michael Johnson. This smooth striker is looking to halt the rise of his crosstown counterparts. And folks, how about this co-main event between top 10 middleweights Derek Brunson and Uriah Hall, both strikers have a flair for the dramatic on their feet, and either one could get another spectacular KO. To add to the highlight reel, the FS1 UFC Fight Night weigh-in show starts now. Well, folks, tomorrow they fight. Today they weigh in. Hello and welcome to the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. I am Karen Bryant, alongside a pair of welterweights, the reigning defending welterweight champion of the world, Mr. Tyron Woodley. And, of course, we've got Dan Hardy, who fought for the title himself, Laura Sanko, on location. T. Wood, though, come on. You got to have something for us. Who is next? Who are you fighting? Who are you fighting? Who are you you fighting? know what is funny? I've been moving in silence. I've been seeing a lot of chatter on the Internet, a lot of people. Yeah. People have the, um, the thought that I have not known, I've not accepted a fight. But actually, I got some big news for you guys. Yeah? You will see the welterweight champion of the world. Don't get it confused, because some of you guys have it. <laughs> I'll be taking on Steven Wonderboy Thompson yes. in New York City, November 12th, UFC 205, Madison Square Garden. Boom! I would say drop the mic at this point, right? Wow. Just... <laughs> wow, that's really exciting. You said that quite politely as well. I know there's some, there's some beef between you two. I wanted to call him Wonder Woman, but... <laughs> but... The inside of me kept it to myself. Very that good. That's is, a champion well, it's, right it's there. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. That's a great way to start the show. T would though. I do want to talk to you about that. But of course, we're here for Hidalgo. Let's talk about the main event. It's a really a great rivalry. Got American top team Dustin Poirier taking on the Black Zillion Michael Johnson. Obviously, Poirier is an ATT guy just like you. What what can we know about his game? I mean, this matchup is intriguing. We know Dustin Poirier for his pressure, for his power strike. One thing that we forget about is his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt. This guy has a lot of submissions on it. His belt. He's in the game and to win it. And if you realize that at lightweight, he's having a lot more fun because he doesn't have to drop all the way down the featherweight. That's a good point. He does look so much better at this weight class, and probably because he can spend a bit more time focusing on game planning. And that's exactly what he's going to need against Michael Johnson because Johnson's going to establish that jab early. He's going to try and maintain that distance and also work those low kicks as well that we saw him use early on in the Nate Diaz fight, which he didn't stick with. I thought they started to pay off, but I'd like to see him use them in this fight. And plus, we can't ignore the plus 80% takedown defense. He's got to keep this fight standing if he's going to walk away with the win. Well, yeah, and it seems like anyway, Tyron Poirier is more comfortable with that anyway, getting these three knockouts out of his last four fights. You know, it's funny because Michael Johnson started in wrestling. When was the last time we seen him take a takedown, you know? So it just shows you where the game of mixed martial arts is, is, is taking us at this point. Dustin Poirier has a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and a Muay Thai background, but now he's utilizing a lot more boxing. Mm -hmm. So with that said, I think that just in general, we don't know what to expect out of either one of these fighters. All right, folks. Well, it is time for them to make it official, so we're going to head out to Hidalgo, Texas. Let's check in with John Anik, the master of ceremonies. Take it away, John. Oh, is it great to be here in Hidalgo, Texas for the first time. Thank you all for coming to the weigh-in. How about a hand for our Octagon girls, Chrissy Blair, Vanessa Hansen, one of the best matchmakers in the world, Sean Shelby, of course, the greatest living American, Brian Stan is in the building as well. All right, let's get things started. We begin with the UFC Fight Pass prelims. First up in the bantamweight division, Alejandro Diablito Perez versus Albert the Gladiator Morales. Let's go, baby. All right, guys, what can you tell us about Morales? Well, his nickname used to be the Warrior. Now he's upgraded to the Gladiator since he's making his UFC debut. This is a kid that was fine. He was found on looking for a fighter. As I said, this is his UFC debut. He's a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. This kid is a very intense competitor. Sometimes we worry about ring rust. I think if he was willing to step up to the task in front of the boss, Dana White, I think he would do the same thing. And I don't expect to see any adrenaline dump. All right, and his official weight, 135 pounds. And his opponent, the ultimate fighter, Latin America season one winner, Alejandro Perez. 
Really excited to see Perez on the card. You know, the first winner of the Ultimate Fighter Latin America, he looked very good on the show. He's an AKA product as well, so he's been spending a lot of time with Javier Mendez working on his game. He's been a pro for 11 years as well. That's something we can't forget. He does get a little reckless, a little wild, but he's very good at finding pockets of opportunity in fights. Ooh, what a face off. Oh, yeah. Also, 135 pounds for ready. Perez. They are ready. That's what happens when you let them hydrate at 10 a.m. <laughs> they get a little bit more smoke. That's though. true. And now the featured belt of the US. All right, Podcast let's take a look at our next fight, guys. Eric Montano versus Eric, Randy Eric Brown. Montano we will see Randy Brown making Randy the walk Blue first. Boy Brown. First discovered on Dana White's Looking for a Fight, Randy Brown has not always had an easy path. Growing up in a very poor part of Jamaica, he can recall walking over a mile just to get water. It's a level of adversity that he says has made him the fighter that he is. And guys, not the only Jamaican on the card, of course, Uriah Hall as well. 171, the official 171 for weighs in, uh, or the weight rather, for Randy and Brown. And his opponent, the ultimate fighter of Latin America, season two winner, Eric Perry Montano. All right, Eric, guys. Okay, I'm jumping all over you. <laughs> Eric Montano, man, he's won six of his last um, seven fights. He got five wins by submission. Um, tough Latin America, two contestant. Obviously, he did a great job there, winning several fights. He has a very, very, very good timing for his takedown, which is very hard to do in mixed martial arts. You have the time to need an uppercut. He's found a way to get his opponents down to the campus. To the canvas. Um, he trains a lot out of Mexico City. He did his entire training camp there. Um, so we expect him to be really consistent. 171 pounds for Montano, 171 for Brown as well. I always wonder if Sean Shelby's picking a winner in his head there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks, welcome back to Los Angeles. You can catch the next four prelims tomorrow on FS1, the exclusive home of the UFC. Up next, our banterweights, Jose Quinones and Joey Gomez. Dan, let's talk about the fast finisher, Gomez. He's actually never made it to the second round. Apart from his UFC debut, that was the first time ever. He came in as the KO king. He stopped all six opponents. A very, very exciting fighter. A real hard-nosed athlete. Likes to push forward, likes to be aggressive. He's got good scrambles as well, so if he ever gets taken down to the floor, expect him to pop right back to his feet. And he also enjoys a four-inch reach advantage on this one, so he's going to have to make use of that one. He's got a real nice, loose style. I really enjoy watching him, and he hits like a truck. Nice, and yes, it was that he never made it past the second round. That's my mistake there. Let's talk about his opponent. Opponent, Jose Quinones. Jose Quinones, man, this, this this kid is definitely an athlete. He's a former soccer player, trains at Alliance MMA under Eric Del Ferio. So we know that he's going to have a well-rounded game. Um, he's known for his powerful overhand right, and he has some strong takedowns in the clinch as well. Yeah, uh, Quinones weighing in at 134.5, Gomez 135. Of course, we know that our good friend Dominic Cruz, the champ out of Alliance as well. And uh, yeah, Eric Del Fierro, really one of the most highly regarded coaches working in the business these days. Quinones was very emotional coming into his first, yeah. into his last fight, the ultimate right. fighter finale. All right, guys, well, let's take a look at the next one. Antonio Carlos Jr., better known as Shoe Face, taking on Leonardo Augusto Leleco. And Leleco is up first. Brazil's Leonardo Augusto Leleco is looking for his first win inside the UFC octagon after dropping a decision to Anthony Smith in his debut in February. Leleco began his martial arts journey at the age of 12 and holds a black belt in karate and BJJ. You have to watch Leleco because sometimes you look like he's playing possum. You think? <laughs> he comes back. He comes back and he'll knock you out. I've seen that in several fights. I've broken down a few times. Yeah. And he will come back when you think you have him out. So. 186 pounds for Leleco. Let's take a look now at Antonio Carlos Jr. Man, we first met on the Ultimate Fighter in Brazil. I gotta love shoe face. This has got to be your favorite nickname. It is. In it's the my sport. favorite nickname in Every the Every time, UFC. you always love to say I it. I relish saying it. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be a busy night for American Top Team. There's another American Top Team prospect here, in Antonio Carlos Jr. A very good black belt with power in both of his hands. He was the first pick for Vanderlei Silva on Team uh, on the, the Ultimate Fighter Brazil, and that's got to be a massive boost in confidence for him. But it's also worth noting he won that at heavyweight. Mm -hmm. He made one fight at the, in the UFC at light heavyweight, and then he moved straight down to middleweight, and he looks huge at this weight class. And he hit 185 on the dot. <laughs> All right, our next is All right the folks, let's take a look now at Augusto Montano versus Bilal. Remember the name Muhammad. Muhammad will be walking to the stage first. 
Rufus Sport product Bilal Mohammed has an impressive record of 9-1. His only loss coming in the form of a fight of the night bonus winning performance. He's a fighter with a promising career, but just in case he decides to take a different path, he does have a law degree to fall back on. So guys, of course, he's coming off the fight of the night with my podcast partner, Alan Joban here. And as uh, Bilal hits 170.5, I asked Alan about him and he said, yeah, basically the chin on this guy is ridiculous. I mean, if you remember that fight, he took a lot of damage and just kept coming forward. It was crazy. Never discouraged at all. Continued to push forward. Let's take a look at Montano now. Definitely, this kid's going to be up for the challenge as well. So Montano's six of his last seven, he has 11 KO wins. He finished all 13 of his opponents in the first round. I think this kid is going to be one that he's going to have to test that chin on. So this should be a pretty good bout. Always good to see a little red hair on the scale. Oh, well. Someone yeah, represented. Dan. Not quite as cool as mine, I have to admit. But... Yours was pretty legendary. <laughs> I think you set the standard. I think you did as well. <laughs> I think you did as well. All right, guys. Up next, we've got Gabriel Benitez taking on Sam Cecilia. Let's take a look at Cecilia coming to the stage first. Sam Cecilia. We know we're in for a scrap when we watch him fight. Oh, yeah. He always comes swinging. I think it's 100% on each punch. <laughs> um, AKO wins, and he has a record to prove it. A very, very high finish rate. He's extremely game in every single fight. Um, he's definitely a fan favorite. Yeah, training with Michael Kieso a lot of time, up with the sick jitsu crew. That entire camp is always, always grimy. Always, always up willing for to it. get in your face. All right, let's uh, hear from Gabriel Benitez now. Another camp that's going to be busy tonight, uh, tomorrow night, AKA, as you can see, Javier Mendez in his corner. And one thing that Javier Mendez said. This, this is the hardest kicker he has ever felt through the pads. And you've got to bear in mind some of the guys that fight out of AKA. Guys like Luke Rockhold, obviously. Yes. DC, DC has had a, had a lot of good things to say about him as well last week. So I'm really excited for this one. All right, now we get to the main card. All right, welcome back to the desk. We are ready to weigh in the fighters on the six fight main card. Hitting the scale next are the featherweights Chaz Skelly and Maximo Blanco. T Wood, let's talk about the Venezuelan wrestler Maximo Blanco. Man, Maximo Blanco, he might be a wrestler by base, but we can look forward to seeing some powerful strikes from him early. He throws a very hard left kick. Very hard left hand. Really, anything coming from the left side is going to be hard. But to match it, he has a powerful right hook as well. So if you can throw both attacks, you can kind of keep your opponent in the middle. So I think he's going to look to um, gauge distance and, you know, cut off the cage. And his opponent, Chaz Skelly. Texas native and submission machine Chaz Skelly wanted to take his striking to the next level, so he took his camp to the Black Zillions, where he could study under Henry Hooft. He says his time in Boca Raton not only yielded significant improvement in his striking, but a love of spearfishing as well. The official weight for the scrapper. It's always interesting to see, you know, a real strong wrestler move to a camp that's got a, a, a real strong pedigree in striking. I mean, Henry Hooft is doing amazing things with some of those fighters down at the Black Zillions, and to, to see a, a good wrestler cross over there, um, I, I always wonder what he's going to add to his game. Plus, he's got the reach advantage, yes. so he can maybe make use of that. Definitely, it's easy to do what you're good at. You know, it's hard to go into an arena where you're not Moving comfortable, so it's good to make it, see to make that move. All right, folks, let's move on now to Chris Wade versus Islam Makachev. These guys will be throwing down at lightweight. It's been nearly a year since Russian fighter Islam Makachev has stepped inside the octagon. Looking to rebound from the only loss of his 13-fight career, Makachev will be looking to showcase his world champion combat sambo level skills, and this is his third UFC bout. And another standout from AKA. You're right, you guys. AKA repping tomorrow night. AKA, ATT, Black Zillions, they got a lot of guys on this card. Chris Wade trying to get back in the win column. Now, what's interesting here is that his last fight was a loss to Habalov, which is a teammate of Makachev. So you've got to assume that he's, he's going to be prepared for this fighting style. He's going to be expecting that combat sambo uh, wrestling approach. Uh, so he should be very prepared for this one. One thing I will say is a neck hunter. He's got two submissions by uh, Rene Gicho, two by Guillotine, but he is constantly chasing that submission win. Both guys hitting weight. Makachev at 155.5, Chris Wade at 156. Right, our next bout is in the welterweight division. No handshake after this. Nope. Juan Jukau Carnero taking on Kenny Robertson. This one is contested in your division, gentlemen. That is welterweight. 
Got my man Kenny Robinson. He is a Division I wrestler. He has an MMA record of 15 to 4. Six submissions, 10 finishes his opponent in the first round, four of six in his last um, bouts in the octagon. He is a fighter that will close the gap immediately. He is fighting against another grappler, so I'm, a, I'm interested to see how this fight goes. He goes for the takedown, look for the submission, but is he set up and bang? Kenny Robertson in at 170.5. Let's now hear from Laura Sinko. Rowan Carnero is moving back down to welterweight, looking to reignite this his second stint in the UFC. A fighter with 16 years of professional experience, his longevity is probably due to the fact that he absorbs the third fewest significant strikes of anyone in his division's history. Guys, he did absorb some significant strikes from Derek Brunson, though. So uh, this guy will tell you firsthand how hard of a hitter he is. Makes the weight at 171 pounds. If I remember right, you fought Anderson Silver in his second ever pro fight, so you know, that's got to make you, make you afraid of getting hit too much. <laughs> yeah, I had plenty of time on the mat with this individual, but he has, we call it the jiu-jitsu squeeze. <laughs> when he gets around you, <laughs> it's pretty much over. All right, folks, guys, now back at lightweight, 155 pounds here. Let's look at Evan Dunham versus the newcomer, Rick Glenn, the newbie making the walk first. A former champion in another organization, Rick Glenn will be making his UFC debut on just two weeks' notice. Typically a featherweight, he will be moving up to 155 for this fight, but it's a move he says doesn't bother him one bit, and he might just stay at lightweight. Rick Glenn, this kid is extremely scrappy. I spent some time with him when he was training with Duke Rufus. Though this is last minute, he prepares for moments like this where he can step in, seize the opportunity. So I wouldn't be surprised if he came out and give a better showing. All right, and Dan, I know you've been impressed with Evan Dunham lately. Yeah, you know, it's a big ass to face Dev. Evan Dunham in your UFC debut. He's had 16 what fights in the organization so far, and he's such a strong grappler. I've trained with him a, a, several times myself, and he's taken some time off recently to focus on opening Dunham Jiu Jitsu. And I will say they were represented very well at the Eddie Bravo Invitational by uh, Kyle Griffin, who made it all the way through to the finals in that, uh, in that tournament. Evan Dunham is just such a durable fighter, it's going to be difficult to keep space from him. And get that experience as well. Absolutely. Well, folks, here we do have our co main event. This one is what we call a Strikers Delight here, Uriah Hall taking on Derek Brunson, and here comes Brunson. Derek Brunson, he is the wrestler, the three-time NCAA um, Division II All-American, but he has eight KO That's victories. That's what I'm saying. So do not I think he's just going for the double A clinch. You know, he was undefeated as an amateur fighter, and he has some great notable wins. Yeah, 186 pounds for Derek Brunson. Gave us a little dab on the way off the scale yeah. as well, so he's in good spirit. All right, you know, this is going to be a this going to be a huge win if he can beat Uriah Hall here because not only is Uriah Hall an exciting fighter to watch, but he's well known around the world as well. You know, he was supposed to fight Anderson Silva. He was very disappointed he didn't get that opportunity. But just the kind of fighter that he is, the kind of finishes that he can he can get in the octagon, really established him as one of the most exciting guys to watch. Um, he's very dynamic. He's dangerous everywhere. But we've got, to, we've got to underline the kicking game here. This is going to be a very exciting one. As you can see, there's some trash talking going yes, on. Yes, there has been on social media as oh, well, yeah. leading up. All right, with that backdrop, it is now time to take a closer look at the men on the marquee, the two lightweight contenders who will share the octagon tomorrow in our five-round main event. Since my move from featherweight to lightweight, I feel rejuvenated. I'm working smarter now, I'm, I'm getting older. I got a family at home and I'm balancing this, this life out better. Before I was just focused on burning calories and driving myself crazy. I'm definitely becoming a more mature fighter. I'm on a four fight win streak. You know, I feel untouchable. In this fight, I'm considering myself a desperate man. And you know, coming off of two losses, I have so much to prove this fight. I just want war. You know, I'm ready, I'm hungry, I want, I want blood. You don't really want to go against a desperate man that has nothing to lose because he's very dangerous. I'm headed to the top, and this is just part of my journey. It's gonna be another display of violence. Every time I step into the cage, it's it's a better version of myself. And I feel like I'm gonna be one or two fights away from a title fight. This fight, I'm looking to prove to myself that I am the best in the world. 
I have a different mindset going into these fights now. It's going to be so much more aggressive, just like I was in the very beginning of my career. Oh, that's it! Michael Johnson by knockout! You know, I don't go home to loving family like he does. You know, I go to the gym, I go home, I'm thinking about Dustin Poirier. The night of that fight, there's going to be violence. I'm trying to put food on the table for my family and to earn my title shot. Michael Johnson is trying to steal it from me, and I'm not going to have it. Oh! I'm going to f*** him up. First fighter to the scale, currently ranked number 10 in the world, Michael the Menace Johnson. Michael Johnson, he's really got to get back in the wing column here. You know, that, that loss to Nick, uh, Nate Diaz was very frustrating. And I thought he had a really good first round. You know, he established the, the low kick early, but he got drawn into a boxing match. And because he gave up a little bit of reach, and because Nate Diaz was able to get inside of his head, he just kind of threw him off his game. But you've got to remember, we were talking about him in title shot contention a little while back, specifically with the win over uh, uh, Gleason Tibau, the knockout in the second round, and the win against uh, Edson Barbosa. You know, he's, he's got a lot of potential. I don't think he's realized it in the UFC so far, though. But he has a very tough kid coming up. Dustin Poirier is as tough as they come. He's one of the hardest workers in American Top Team. It's been a delight to watch this kid evolve as a mixed martial artist. 156 for Poirier. Michael Johnson did weigh in at 154.5. We got to fight. Love this. Oh yeah, this is great. And this is this is from Dustin Poirier's perspective. This has nothing to do with the ATT Black Zillions rivalry. No. This is purely about him and Michael Johnson. Yeah. He, he doesn't want to get involved in all of that, but. Another thing I will mention about Dustin Poirier is that... Uh, he didn't move on a jump. <laughs> uh -oh, uh -oh. oh, these guys are ready to go. We got some, right, we got some contact. Luckily, we have the future president, we'll Brian Stan, in there to take care of MJ, come over here, if you would. Uh, things boiling over there a little bit. What was said there between you and Dustin Poirier? He's doubting himself. Bottom line is the Grim Reaper has no words for victims before he takes them. I'm gonna fuck you up, boy. Michael Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. And we step over here. Dustin Poirier, your thoughts on the stare down today, man? I think he's cute, man. He's trying. He thinks he's trying to talk shit to me and get in my head, but the fight's already won. Congrats on the baby. Another main event, ladies and gentlemen. Dustin Poirier. All right, y'all been great. Thank you so much for coming out. We'll see you right back here for the fights tomorrow night. All right, thank you so much. To Introducing the all-new, fully reimagined UFC Fight Pass. No matter where you are, UFC Fight Pass brings the action to you including live events, original programming, and the world's largest MMA fight library. With a more powerful and precise search engine, finding a specific fighter or event has never been more simple. Providing you the content you want with a simple click, tap, or swipe. And now, you can customize your own watch queue all designed to bring each user a personalized viewing experience unlike any other. Experience the all-new UFC Fight Pass. The ultimate MMA experience. Two of the biggest personalities in MMA. I make the predictions and I make them wrong. Now host the best podcast in the sport. I'm the first guest. <laughs> We're not going to mention the eight fighters that said no. UFC Unfiltered with Jim Norton and Matt Serra brings you the latest in fight news and analysis, behind the scenes stories, pop culture debates, celebrity guests, and more. We have The Rock calling in. How are you, man? I just want to see a great fight. <laughs> Hear new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and UFC.com. UFC Unfiltered, powered by digital media. On Saturday, September 17th, the UFC Octagon arrives in Hidalgo for the first time with an unforgettable fight card. In the main event, two hard-hitting lightweights put it all on the line as Dustin Poirier and Michael Johnson face off. Plus, top 10 middleweight finishers Uriah Hall and Derek Brunson look for a signature win. Catch all the action of UFC Fight Night live at State Farm Arena September 17th. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Saturday, October 1st, the UFC returns to Portland with a Rock'em Sock'em main event between knockout artists John Lineker and John Dodson and a Striker's Delight fight card featuring Will Brooks, Cowboy Oliveira, Sergio Pettis, Nate Marquardt, and many more. UFC Fight Night, live at Moda Center October 1st. Oh! Life and fight.
fighting. Nobody's taking this away from me. It felt good knocking out Michael Bisbank. And I'm gonna do it again.